Toronto Cox. I got food in my mouth. I apologize. All right, so episode twelve. Yeah. So we're um seven days out of legalization. Hold up one sec. All right, seven days out of the legalization and the um, the edible episode. <laughs> it's interesting, you know, we lost power last week. We had to uh, go record over at was um Caribbean right. Caribbean right. Sunset. Yeah, shout out to them. So we had to shoot there, and uh, hey. yeah, we were a little a little bit inebriated last week uh. since we are now <laughs> the prohibition on marijuana has been lifted. You know? How do you guys feel about that? Let me turn the volume down on this. How's the last seven days been for you? There we go. Post-prohibition of the marijuana era. Um, It's been the exact same for me since before it went legal. Yeah? Yeah, Exactly. (laughs) I hardly even smoked the shit, but when I do, I wasn't getting bothered. Okay. (laughs) I I feel feel like it's it's about being smart with it. You can't just be like, you know, you just got to treat it how you, you know, how you treated it before anyways, you know what I'm saying? Like. Yo, before we continue, can we give a shout out to the Eastern Ave tap water? Tap water, it's horrible. <laughs> it's got so much chlorine and fucking yeah. calcium in it that it's white when you pour it. Yeah. <laughs> like it it's literally, cloudy. yeah, yeah, like it looked like mustard gas. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. You got to watch your arm there because we got a guest this week. And with your arm there, you're covering up our guest, but shout out to our guest. He's yeah, our yeah. first re- recurring guest. Yep, I first no recurring Ches guest. Ches would be, right? But he's he's He fan. was kind of a stand-in. Yeah. yeah. I feel like but he's But no, fan. yeah, you're, I guess you're correct. I, 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 feel like, I feel like Ches is kind of like, he's part of the show, sort of. Like, yeah, he's like distant relative. Yeah, yeah, kind of. You know. And I mean? now Seth has just become a distant relative. Exactly. <laughs> yes, what's up, man? What's up? Right, yeah. All right, so he's back. My you know man. I mean? We're going to talk to him yeah, about the uh, about the documentary as we were before post-documentary. We'll get into that in a bit and whatnot and what that experience was like. But, um, yeah, man, a week into a week into the end of Prohibition, some people have already got ticketed. You know, a lot of people haven't got their product because there's a postal strike and, you know. What great the, timing, eh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What great timing. You got a postal Can't strike. Still hit up man. thccollection.com, though. There you go. Shout them out, thccollection.com. But, yeah, man, the, uh, what is it, the OCS and whatnot having some problems, I heard, because they got so many orders. They ran <laughs> out of their product. A lot of the other provinces ran out of product really fast. Like, we didn't They were see prepared. That coming. <laughs> you know, I think we all saw it coming, you know what I mean? And their approach to this cool but they could have maybe did it a little bit better you know maybe they should have consulted with the experts yeah you should have gave, gave me a call guys <laughs> come on one of the experts here you know saying any of you companies if you want someone to come and you know give you my expertise well you know hook me up with that cash hold and we can make that happen hint hint you know what i mean like i want i want to go work for one of these legal companies and give them what's in my brain you know collected over the years of marijuana culture yeah. And, um, you know, see where we could take it. Because I think that's what's going to happen. You know, you can't just hire some random guy straight out of university and be like, hey, man, you're going to be the CEO. You this. won't be like the Russell Simmons of weed. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would love to be the Russell Simmons of weed. But, hey. uh, you know, but, but yeah, I think a lot of guys, you know, I think a lot of these companies are going to have to go to guys who have street knowledge in this and a little bit of more. Well, that would be the smart culture. thing to yeah. do. Yeah, like you can't just hire some marketing executive straight out of university and be like, hey, turn my company into whatever. And he has no idea what he's diving into. You got to have somebody working for your company who actually understands how the does, culture. How does that like interview go for like that contract or whatever? Like, so do you know. smoke weed? Yes. <laughs> you know, um, like, is no, this a actually, trick question? Uh, I'm on to edibles now. Uh, I'm on to vaping. You know what I mean? Like you just drop the science. What like, age oh, shit, did you okay. start smoking at? 13, you know, like hmm. something like that, you know. But well, the last guy started at eight, but you got a better personality. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I think it has to be deeper than that. I think you have to understand more a little bit about the, uh, you know what I mean, about the culture and the people who smoke in the different aspects. Because yeah. there's different groups, there's yeah. different subgroups of yeah. people who are into marijuana. It's not just but everyone's the same. They're kind of I mean? trying to just market it, though, as like still like medical, aren't they? Like, no, nah, recreational. No, nah, it's recreational now. now yeah. It know? is, but like. I don't know. I haven't really seen an advertising approach as far as that goes. I haven't seen a lot of posters uh, on uh, on the TTC. I've seen that Beck yeah, Taxi like, one. I'm pretty yeah, sure you posted that. That, yeah. that was hilarious. Hey, see, <laughs> see the volume's all the way up there? I keep forgetting about the volume every time we do this. Does, but the whole thing about people not go, being able to ball. drive when they're high is crank that soldier boy. Yeah. Yeah. People been high and driving, and yeah. how yeah. many accidents do we have because of marijuana? I think there was like a really bad one the day after but what, up in Markham or something. Really? Yeah. But, yeah, but in really general, hear. prior to that, though, nothing. Yeah, there, were, there weren't a whole lot. 
you know, not, not reported anyway. Yeah. So. yeah. But like I said, there's there's layers to it though. You know what I mean? Because you're gonna have the hip hop people who are in it. You're gonna have more of the rock people. You're gonna have more of like the Grateful Dead old school. Man, crowd, everyone smokes weed. Crowd. Yeah, you do, but you gotta cater to them differently. Your approach can't just be smoke. You know what I mean? If you're a company, and yeah. you want to really be successful, come. You know when they really allow for less of the the rules. You know what I mean? Like to really succeed at this, you, you're gonna have to know your market. And you're gonna have to understand how to kind of market to different demographics as you would anything, almost anything yeah. else but it's not something where you could just be like okay i'm going for the college crowd because that you know in theory that'll work but you know you're gonna have people all over you if you're just trying yeah. to you know market the young kids with this right if you really want to be i shouldn't say young kids that they should get some of them old folks man yeah. they could monopolize <laughs> quick if they, if they did an uh, like a commercial with wiz khalifa yeah snoop, snoop dog yeah meth red Meth, I was just going to say Meth the Man or Red Man. Willie Nelson. Future Chong. <laughs> Chappelle. Yeah. And you throw a couple others in there. You could find a few others. Yeah. Yeah, it might cost a lot of money, but that commercial, like you will. Yeah. Business will boom. <laughs> People will skip the dealer real quick. Absolutely. Be like, yo, we're done with the dealer, man. We're just going straight to the source now. Yeah. Yeah. But is the For source real. that good? Now, nah, right now, no, nah, it'll probably be garbage. Right now, still. the prices yeah. are absolutely expensive, and like I said, because they got so many orders, some people aren't getting the orders. And from what I heard, see, what I knew is, um, before this whole legalization thing, you could send like the, the Canadian Postal Service tells you how to send marijuana through the mail. I've researched say words. this. Oh, they tell you on their website. What they say is <laughs> a, it cannot be labeled on the outside. Really? B, it cannot smell. So basically, you have to be discreet with it. Now, what's happening is some people are sending the packages. OCS, I guess, they're sending some packages, and maybe, maybe something's not sealed properly, and it's starting to smell. So oh, yeah. those packages are going into what's called well, the postal service smell? graveyard. And some people yeah. aren't getting their that product graveyard, that they do uh, for, right? That graveyard is in my pocket. I'd right. be so mad if I ordered a bunch of weed online and yeah, that shit never man. came. Well, that's that's why I can still, never trust it, though. You still yeah. gotta buy it, you know what I mean? Like, support your, your, your black market dealer if you still have one. Or support you know. thccollection.com. Yeah. Use the promo code HIPHOP, HIPHOP and save 10% yeah. on every purchase you make. They're, they're US or Canadian based. <laughs> Say what? US or Canadian based. That's Canadian. the website. What? Canadian. THC? Oh, yeah, yeah, they're okay. Canadian based. Yeah, they won't even ship to the, the States. No, yeah. no, absolutely. So I guess the online ones could stay in, in business, but not it's, the locations. It's, it's a gray area. Yeah, big gray area. It's a gray area. area. Cause I have a homie too who runs a medical company. Yeah. And for the last year and a half, they've been like they've been doing really well. Like he quit yep. his job and shit off this, yeah. right? And um, those edibles we did last yeah. week were courtesy of him. Okay. Shout out to Flight 9 Medibles. Yeah, like I said, so um, the package isn't labeled. But, like, even he's, like, I, s- I seen him on my birthday on the weekend, and he's, like, I'm considering, like, shifting my focus to, like, wow. almost start a new company, like, because yeah, he's, crazy. like, it's a very weird area right now. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like, yeah, even it's, more it's cool, so like, than in that gray area before it was legalized. Yeah. Because yeah. there's really no rules to it, right? So, like, yeah, it's... I don't know. Well, it's, if it's, you think about it, it's a gold mine. It's a renewable gold mine. You know what I mean? Like the 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 possibilities for entrepreneurship in this industry are kind of endless. The only downside is if companies like Molson and Coca Cola and Coors, oh, and you big know, money companies come in it. and monopolize yeah. it. You know they're getting their hands yeah. on it. And if they do, then you know that kind of sucks. But right now, I'm. I think there's there's possibilities. I don't like the whole idea that you have to buy all of your product from one source because that doesn't breed competition. No. Yeah, that's and what that's I was gonna, gonna say. They, the government the shouldn't be able to monopolize. The no, market. Yeah. they shouldn't at all. They shouldn't at all. But I think hopefully, you know, within a year or two, that loosens up. They said by April they're gonna let the privatization kick in. That's the privatization. But yeah. again, same thing. If you have to buy from strictly one source, I but like, do you trust the government with anything no. else? Like, what? <laughs> like, name me one thing you actually trust the government with in day-to-day life Maybe that's like now i'm gonna try <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess yeah i guess I there's know, one thing how you feel about this isn't that what they do with alcohol now kind of they monopolize it with the tax yeah yeah, yeah. same thing what were you expecting <laughs> oh no I, I wasn't necessarily expecting anything different this is better yeah. than what i was expecting to be honest with you because prior to ford's government like we were gonna have we were gonna have you could only get it from the ocs location mm-hmm. they're only yeah. gonna have four within the first year, yeah. 20 yeah. by 2020 or, or 200 by 2020 or whatever. Yeah. So I'm happy that they're going private. I'm, I'm a lot happier mm-hmm. with that than, like, the old plan. Um, again, I just want to see a little bit more 
competition as far as where you can actually buy your source from. But again, like you said, mm. you know, it's like that with, with alcohol. But is it like that in every other province, though? Because I heard it isn't like no, that no. in the other provinces. Um, no, definitely I know it is in other, some provinces, but not yeah. all of them. Because like I, out Alberta's east, they have like, like that too. specific liquor stores. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's interesting, you know what I mean, to see But how, the thing is with like booze, right? Because all these companies have been around so long. And, you know, prohibition proved not to work. You couldn't take mm-hmm. over, you know what I mean, yeah. even with making it illegal. It just actually made it worse. So, yeah. like, they can't control it, but they can control it through tax. You know what I right. mean? Like, same with cigarettes and stuff. They can't control, monopolize the market, right. Right. but they can monopolize through being the only source, right? Yeah. And, um, I don't, like, what is it with the weed, though? Like, does the government have actual, like, their own, like, growing facilities and stuff? Or do they actually go to these companies, you know what I mean? Because that would be the smart thing. Go to these companies that already exist, that have already put in two, three years of groundwork since it's been a gray area, and have, like, very... I think that's what it is. Yeah. That's what they need to be doing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's what it Some is. Some of the big companies want to shut down the dispensaries altogether. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, they're involved. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. That, that that's a whole other thing, too. Like, the dispensary, that's a whole other area right now, too, where I I personally feel like they should have approached the dispensaries and said, okay, we're going to give you a chance if you want to buy your license out right yeah. now, you know, rather than us shutting you down, which is just going to inflate the black market anyways yeah. for the next few months until April when people can get their license and open the stores, right? Yeah. So it's, it's it, again, the whole rollout, you know, some of it's okay, some of it's just a little bit a little bit off right now, I feel. And then the the certain laws that, you know. And, like, the other thing with it, too, like, because they have, like, a little official stamp on it, right? Yeah. And, like, they're going to, like, I've been reading articles saying, I don't know what's satire, what's not. There's, like, 100 articles a day. But, like, I was reading one that said that, like, if you get busted without legal weed, that, like, you'll get charged. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, so what, do you have to literally walk around with that little stamp they gave you? Like, with your, like, you know what I mean? Well, I already rolled it into Blunt's officer, but here's the stamp. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, what the fuck? Like, I don't, like, how are you going to yeah. control that? Yeah, no, it, it's, uh. It makes it so much easier for them well, to just bust you on nothing. Yeah, yeah like, it almost seems been... like some of these laws and rules they're putting in place almost make it scarier to be a pothead now than yeah. ever before. <laughs> like... Well, there's, there's ways to get out of that. I mean, you're allowed to grow your own product, right? So yeah. if you get approached yeah. on the street and a cop says, hey, where'd you get it? All you have to say is, I grew this. Actually, I have another they have question, no way of too. That you didn't. I was talking about with my parents uh, on the weekend. And so, like, possession. That term only works in effect if you're out. Yeah. If you're not on your property. Okay. Because I was thinking, I was like, what happened if, like, the cops bust your crib? And, like, in possession, you have, like, you're allowed four plants. Like, let's say I yield, like, a quarter pound. Well, I It's think- like, well, you're allowed to grow those plants, but you're not allowed to have the weed. Like, how would right, that go, yeah, right? Right, right. No, they would have to have a reason to come into your crib. So some type of but, warrant specifically. But would that warrant, that. would that warrant a possession charge, though? Like, if you have it at your crib and they have a warrant... Is that still possession charge? Uh, it would probably be a possession and like a intent to distribute or something charge. It would, it would be something but like, different, charge, you know? But like, like if you, you like if cops come into your crib distribute? and you got like a, you get caught with like an illegal burner or something, right? Right. You get a possession. Yeah. Charge, right? So if possession, like you know, is one thing. If you're just out on the street, okay, yeah, you didn't, you brought it. You know, what I mean, you shouldn't have done that. But like. If they're going to tell you you can grow four plants and then you can be charged for having more than four grams in possession or some <laughs> shit like that or like 24 grams, it's like, how the fuck does that work? No, no, no. I think you're allowed. You're only allowed to be on the road with up to 30 grams okay. at any particular time when you're out, out. in public. Okay. As far as in your house, I guess they say you're allowed to grow up to four plants. Now, what that can get you, what I guess it yield. depends how good of a grower you are because I know like, some people who could turn four plants into... You know, a lot, and some people just wouldn't get anything out of it. So it just really depends on how you know how good your horticulture skills are. Yeah, like what if you can grow a whole public? Monsanto crop Is after that like these rules, these laws. Like, yeah, yeah, these yeah. Are, they, they are, are like the, the rules for Ontario. It's, like it's, no, no, no. I know that. I mean, like, did you go to a website and read the laws? Like, yeah, yeah. 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 You guys got really interested. Where'd you yeah. get your weed today? Me. <laughs> oh, Mine's homegrown. I only smoke homegrown. <laughs> I'm just and saying, I don't grow yeah. it, but someone I know yeah. does. See the point. The point I'm making is this, it's very early. Yeah. At th- at this point, I feel like everyone we know is smoking weed the same way they did two weeks ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we can we can look at the laws and try to figure it out, but I don't think it's really going to be impacting us for quite some time. Yeah. 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 It all depends how they choose to implement it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all it's coming down to. It's just weird, man. It's weird. It's, it's a weird area. Based on it's, it's a weird area, and it's uh, it's an open market. 
You yeah. know, and not even just for the actual recreational smoking of it. Like, you know, there's going to be other things as far as like creams and, you know, um, mm-hmm. as yeah. far as like tactile things that can be made, oils. You know, so you it's can make a lot of a lot amazing of shit with hemp, hemp and hemp weed. Hemp, I know there's a few know? beer companies already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Yeah. Like Starbucks is already into it. Yeah. Yeah. Starbucks See, is already yeah. into it. Well, hold on yeah. a second. Yeah. Is Starbucks the biggest culture appropriator that exists? <laughs> <laughs> I know Second Cup apparently is going to uh, is going to convert a lot of their actual coffee spots into uh, weed lounges. Yeah, yeah. weed lounges. That's and that's crazy. another possibility too. You can now start opening up. I guess if you could apply for a private marijuana club lounge that's interesting into your spot yeah. but then they have the whole like no smoking you know in yeah thing yeah. so i think we'll see how it you know what i mean we'll see how it kind it's of gonna be uh, a lot of red tape yeah mm-hmm. but again very very interesting to see where it goes first week and like you said it's very very early so you know let's see where it goes and uh let's see if hopefully the people who pioneered the culture if they can actually profit off yeah. this, I think they should be the ones who stand they to won't. profit off this. <laughs> is Mark, is Mark Emery in jail? Yeah. No, he's not in jail, but they I let think... Him out? Uh, I don't know. I don't think he was really in jail. He was. He got, he got out. busted hard, though. He was out, they were like, trying to throw the book back. at him. Well, he he got in trouble, I think, with his wife trying to go to Spain or some shit. I don't know. They railroaded him. Regardless, mm-hmm. they railroaded yeah. that guy because he, you know, he he put in his work. He put in his time. He did jail time for it. He did yeah. everything yeah. to get it to where it's That's at. That's my homeboy's uh, uncle. Oh, so. so oh yeah. well, well, shout out to Mark Emery, man. You yeah. Know, um, Front lines. So. Yeah, That's crazy. man. I, don't, I couldn't do that, but... Hey man, if you that's your passion. I mean man. Yeah, I don't know. I used to like do the yeah. weed march and shit, but yeah. I mean like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dedicate I used to do my whole year. life to getting arrested for weed. I'm like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I used to go every year just for fun, but like now just, I salute you, but yeah. yeah. If I'm there I go, you know what I mean? It's like I celebrate every day. I don't need a, an excuse just to go no. down here and just go crazy in the park. But if I'm down here, you can know, we agree that four twenty is the wackest day on <laughs> on earth? No, you know what? They don't even celebrate 420. It's usually the first Saturday in May. That's when it. That's when that actual like marijuana thing's is. supposed to be. It's it's supposed to be, but then there is the. But big everybody's smoke all about 420. I'm just talking about like in, the actual time, like just 420 all together. Oh, yeah. Like nah. the kids who don't smoke weed would be like, "Yeah, we're getting high today." It's you 420. Know my like it's the corniest is? shit in the world. My favorite time. To I smoke almost like don't a. smoke on 420 <laughs> on purpose. It's like today's my day. I'm not getting high for sure. Nice. Nah, I'm a four. I'm a 4:20 a.m. smoker, not a 4:20. 4:20 a.m. Smoker. smoker. Yeah, I'm a late night, late oh, early shit. morning type of guy. But that's um, around time I'm getting up for work. <laughs> there you go. That's what's up. Yo, what's up? It's your man MLNY Maloney, breaking records, breaking records radio. You know what it is. I'm just here to tell you guys right now that you want to. If any of my smokers out there, basically any of my Canadian smokers. Now that it's legal, what you got to do is you got to head over to thccollection.com and check them out. And make sure you use the promo code HIPHOP. That's H-I-P-H-O-P. And that's all capital letters. Save 10% on every purchase that you make anytime. They got everything. They got deals every single day of the week, which include like free whatever with whatever you buy. And uh, my favorite is Tulip Tuesday. You can get $100 ounces. And that's only on Tuesdays. And you save 10% on every purchase with the promo code HIPHOP, all caps. That's H-I-P-H-O-P. So make sure you go over there. Check them out. That's THCCollection.com for all your good medical needs, for all your good greenery, your extracts, and all that good stuff.